So if it's 530, close, close enough by that clock. It is. 531. Okay. Um, I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for August 20th, 2023. Uh, Ali, would you take? August. April. I'm sorry. April. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> uh, you just made me think I missed my husband's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> says April, and I don't know why I defer to August. Um, how would you take the role? President Smalley. Here. Vice President Hill. Here. Director Fulz. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. And um, Director Ackman is absent, but she did uh, email me on April 13th to let me know that she would not be here. Uh, and I understood also that she had a business engagement uh, in Concord this evening. Yes. I propose that we um, excuse her this evening. I second that. Yep. Very well. President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. District Council is attending virtually this evening. Okay. Um, any additions or deletions to the closed session? Uh, staff has none, Chair. Okay. Uh, oral communications uh, regarding items in the closed session. Do we have anybody from the public in attendance yet? Okay. Uh, well, then with that, we can adjourn to the closed session. 532. So I'd like to reconvene this meeting the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for April 20th, 2023. Uh, would you uh, take roll again, please? President Smalley? Here. Vice President Hill? Here. Director Falls? Here. Director Mayhood? Here. And Director Ackman is excused. Okay. Um, Rick, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has no uh, additions or deletions. Okay. Uh, oral communications. Were for, there any actions taken during closed session oh, that need to be uh, reported? There were no actions taken to report out. Thank you for that question. Um, oral communications um, for any member of the public who wish to address us. An item that's not on our agenda this evening. Uh, now is the opportunity for you to be able to do that. Does anybody wish to speak? I don't see anyone. Uh, moving on then to the presence report. I have nothing that I wish to report this evening. Um, Unfinished business, we have none. Uh, new business, uh, we have two items in front of us today under new business. The first is the uh, Vegetation and Fuels Management Contract Award. Yes, thank you, and the uh, Environmental Planner is here tonight to present that item to the board. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, so in 2021, the Board of Directors adopted the post-fire recovery critical asset marketing vegetation and fuels management plan. After adoption, the district pursued fire hardening and fuel Point to order. Can I just ask uh, Carly to put the microphone closer? Okay. You're a little hard to hear. Right. I know Mark Dolson is channeling right. to me right now. Okay. He'll probably be uh, texting me in a minute. Mary's also going to think. Well, it's also, it's also wait, you're, the background noise. So after adoption, the district pursued fire hardening and field reduction grant opportunities. Um, we were awarded two grants on the California Coastal Commission and two, for an award amount of 200000 and then a Cal Fire grant and another $360,000. Uh, both of those were awarded in fiscal year 21 and 22. 
Uh, the Coastal Commission grant completed fuel reduction on nine sites in 2021, and the CAL FIRE grant is still underway due to the partnership with the Fire Safe Council of Santa Cruz County, who is leading the grant implementation. Uh, funds for that grant, the CAL FIRE grant led through the Fire Safe Council, should be available to us for implementation in fiscal year 23 24. But the district does have over 85 infrastructure sites, including tanks, pump houses, wells, and treatment facilities, which are all in need of fuel reduction. And currently, only 12% of those sites have received these initial treatments. So the district is seeking to lay out all sites, take initial work, and then maintain it annually. So in February 2023, the district released a request for qualifications for fire and vegetation management maintenance work. And the RFQ closed on February 17, 2023, and the qualifications were received from eight local, regional, and statewide contractors. District staff is recommending that the Board of Directors approve a contract with Powers Forestry for implementation of the fire and vegetation maintenance work. And Powers uh, was selected as they do have a registered professional forester on staff, and they also have professional oversight experience combined with cost-effective labor rates. Um, compared to the other contractors who submitted SOQs, Powers has the ability to complete site layouts, which includes marking property boundaries and sensitive biological resources. So it is recommended that the Board of Directors review this memo and direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Powers Forestry in the amount not to exceed $150,000 for the purposes of fire and vegetation management maintenance in fiscal years 22, 23, and 23, 24. Staff's prepared to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I'd like to first make uh, the comment that um, this uh, contract was discussed at the Engineering Environmental Committee meeting on April 7th, um, and the committee uh, concurred with the recommendation uh, presented to us by staff on this uh, contract award. So um, with that, I'll open it up to questions from the board. Jeff? A uh, couple of questions. Um, in your document here, you mentioned that the um, CAL FIRE grant is still underway due to partnership with the Fire Safe Council. <clears throat> does that mean that they haven't given the money out? What, what does still underway mean? Right, so the, the Fire Safe Council was actually awarded, I think it's almost $2.5 million mm -hmm. um, for many different projects uh, throughout our region. And unfortunately, they're just pretty slow moving. I think we they currently don't have a staff member as part of the agency, and they've been working to hire someone. So okay. I think it's mostly just the administrative work that's okay. happening. Um, and I've talked to Cal Fire, and it sounds like they could be open to giving the money directly to our agency, um, so we can get implementation underway. But we're okay. trying to work with the, the council as well. So it's it's not that they're still evaluating whether they're going to give the money, it's, it's administrative procedures. Exactly. Um, and similarly, um, you're asking for $150,000 here. And the CAL FIRE grant looks like 360,000. Uh, what are we doing with the other? So uh, this would be like, I just in the memo, there are 85 sites. So yes. we're hoping to have this budget on top of the grant just so we can get through a bulk of the sites this year and allow for us to just maintain from there on out. Okay. Because the initial work is probably gonna be the largest push. And then from there, we hope we can maintain it even with our own staff. So we'll so get the money and then we'll parcel it out as we work our way through the sites. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I think actually you sort of answered the questions. I have the same ones as Jess, but what my concern was is will we be back doing this every two or three years or? Um, this will be ongoing, I think. Yeah. Until we have more staff and operations, essentially, um, and then we can potentially do it in-house. In-house, but, but right now we're probably looking at something like this every few years with outside contractors. We can probably knock back the budget as we get through more sites just because it'll be easier to work every year. Yeah, the first round is going to be a heavy lift. Yeah. And then after that, it'll be maintenance, which will be, which will be less work to where we'll be able to take it on ourselves in house. Okay. Or is it cost effective just to have them do it? I don't know. I mean, have you sort of tried to figure that out of like we, you know, what their we labor will. costs are? We will. Okay. Thank you. Bob? Yeah. During the discussion, I recall that we hadn't settled on what we were going to do with that money. So what you're recommending now, 
is that we actually add the 150 to the grant to get up to whatever it is, 510,000 in total. Okay, because that was still a question mark, I think, mm -hmm. during the committee meeting. Um, one is obviously budgeted, the other would have to be budgeted into the budget cycle. Um, okay, so that was question one. Question two is, you know, we're, we're coming up on three years after the fire. And my concern is, is that, you know, we get dropped off the list at some point of, you know, because there's other people that have been affected by fire now, right? Um, how many more grants do you think we can get for this? And are we actively pursuing a bunch to finish out the remaining 85? Yeah, so right now, I don't believe there's any that are currently open uh, directly for this kind of work. Um, so Cal Fire does our most grant component cycles, right? Um, but we should continue to pursue these every year. I mean, there's no reason for us not to. Um, like you mentioned, you know, once as we move away from the fire, we lessen our risk. Maybe we don't have as a competitive of a right. proposal, but you know, it's still worth going after. And, and regrettably, the state of California is not flush with money at this point. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of um, things that are going to get cut that they consider non-essential. Um, I, I, I mean, the question I have about who does this work, remediation ongoing, I, I guess I would have to ask the question why we would have trained, skilled um, water agency workers doing this work. I, I just, for the life of me, can't imagine why we would want to do that. Uh, there's lots of other things that skilled, trained people need to be doing on our district and doing um, uh, brush reduction is not at the top of my list. So I, I would really encourage us to look at that one really, really closely given all the other activities that we need our people to be doing. Yeah, the director of operations I've talked about, you know, this work seems to be very expensive. And once we get the, the heavy lift done, we're going to try to see if we can bid out the maintenance end of it because there's a lot of local oh, yeah. landscape type yes. that can do this work and do do this work a lot less expensive. I mean, Robert used to do it over at the, yeah. at the post office, so, right? You know, uh, James and I have talked about that. We get a list of sites, we put on an RP, see what we can, we can uh, find out there that's local and reasonable. This work has turned out to be, I don't know if it's because it's grant funding or after the CDU, but it is a very expensive work. Yeah, it's all of that, plus the uh, preparation work. That right, and the it's environmental background and, and the work that Carly has to do to, to be able to go out on this property, because a lot of it's got endangered species on it, um, and it has issues with sensitive habitat. But, you know, we've got meters, we got pipes, we got well, we tons totally of stuff. Agree with that, totally agree with you. Yeah, so, okay. Thanks. Okay, so and to, to Bob's point, it sounds like it's not necessarily internal staff, but us managing a different contractor then in order to be able to do that work. Great. A, a, That's not what I heard, but I'm glad that was a, clarified. A probably <laughs> less skilled contractor right. yes. to be able to come in to be able to uh, to do that work then. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it by uh, Highland. Uh, I arrived there, you know, on my side of the road, right? So I, I have okay. visions in my mind that this uh, scenario that we're starting with here is chainsaws, and after we're done with that, then we do it on a regular basis. We're at weed whackers instead, yeah. or something like that. Okay. Uh, so with with this uh, <coughs> motion, we're authorizing uh, moving ahead with. Uh, powers for the 50,000. If we get the Cal Fire grant, are you uh, coming back to us then uh, with another uh, proposal, another uh, contract award? That wasn't the plan. Um, if, if that's the board's intention, we can do that. Uh, I, 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 we, so both James and I have put the 100,000 for this upcoming fiscal year right. into our budgets. Um, so we're we're ready to move forward. That's a really interesting idea. But, uh, I'm, I'm, I just want to know what their plan is well, for that. You know, things are going to be different economically in uh, 
the year, but. Mm -hmm. um, so just to clarify, um, you've already included the 100,000 in the 2023-24 budget. It's already in there, but okay. Right. But the question they're asking is the board, do we want to just do the 150 and ask for them to come back on the on the, on the remaining on the remaining balance or, or was your plan just to continue to extend powers then well beyond that 150 to to whatever the cal fire grant is so because that cal fire grant is being implemented by by the fire safe council they would actually contract on the work themselves and we'd give them the permission to work on it then and we tell them which sites we target. Okay, okay. So we wouldn't have any so of the contract. We could, but it would complicate things. So, so I do okay. okay. So we're not managing the contract. That's correct. Okay. okay. But that clarifies the, the okay. question on, on that contract. Okay. Um, any comments from members of the public on this item? Then I will go ahead and uh, make the motion that the board of directors direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Powers Forestry in the amount not to exceed 150,000 for the purposes of fire vegetation management maintenance in fiscal years 2022, 23, and 23, 24. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Holly, would you take a roll call? President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Moving on then to the second item of the uh, biennial, biennial draft budget uh, for fiscal year. 23-25. Thank you, and we have the um, Director of Finance here to present a presentation and the draft budget to the board. Okay, um, so this item is the first round of operating revenue and expenses uh, for the fiscal years 23, 24 through 24, 25. Next, go up to the slide. Uh, so the schedule is April. We do the first round operating revenue and expenses. Internally, um, we're working on the capital budget and non-off revenue and expenses. Come May, we'll bring the second round draft of the operating revenue and expenses, and we'll include input from the committee and board meetings. Um, and then we'll also bring the capital budget and the non-off revenue and expenses to the budget and finance and board meetings. And then internally in May, we are working on putting the full budget packet together. Uh, then come June, we'll bring the full budget packet package, um, including revisions from the May committee and board meetings. And ideally we would like to have this adopted prior to June 30th. So depending on how many revisions and changes are being requested or needed, uh, some special meetings may be needed. Next slide. So the high level operating summary uh, for the 23-24 through 24-25. Um, operating income for 23-24 compared to 22-23, which is the current fiscal year we're in. Uh, de decreased 848,000 or 23.5 percent. Operating income for fiscal year 24-25 compared to 23-24 decreased 177,000 or 6.4 percent. Um, so these next slides will go more into detail on the revenue and expenses. Uh, so next slide, Scott. Thank you. Um, this slide is going over the current fiscal year we're in, 22-23, estimated actuals for revenue. 
So the estimated actuals are coming in 402,000 or 3% unfavorable to budget, meaning lower than what we're budgeted. Consumption is estimated at 609,000 units. Uh, this is based on actual consum consumption through March, plus a three-year average for April through June, which is 1.1% lower than prior year and 66 .6 lower than budgeted units of 650,000. Uh, the basic charge estimated actuals are slightly higher due to a difference in assumptions to how many CZU homes would be back online. And then we have the extra 200,000 in there for the operating coastal conservancy grant. Next slide. Okay, this is the 22-23 estimated actuals for expenses. Um, so these came in 933,000 or 9.85% favorable to budget, meaning lower than what was budgeted. Um, the main factors of those are salaries and benefits and facilities. Salaries and benefits came in 832,000 or 12.6% favorable to budget, primarily due to vacant positions and differences in the budgeted positions versus low, lower cost new hires. Um, and then facilities is 105,000 favorable, primarily due to utility costs coming in lower than what was budgeted. Um, and then the other categories just had small various, very smaller variances that essentially met each other out. Um, next slide. So the fiscal year 23, 24 through 24, 25 revenue projections um, 23, 24 compared to the current fiscal year, we're in decreased 480,000 or 3.6%. Uh, we're projecting consumption at 610 units. And fiscal year 24, 25 compared to 23, 24, increased 286,000 or 2%. Um, the basic fee includes Bracken Bray and Forest Spring homes, and all, and we're assuming all CZU homes are back online. And consumption is projected at 625,000 units. This also includes Bracken Bray, Forest Springs consumption and all of the CZU home consumption. And this budget does not include any estimated rate increases. So it's being budgeted at what the current rates are right now. Uh, expenses. So the expenses, sorry, next slide. Uh, the expenses for fiscal year 23, 24 through 24, 25. Um, 23, 24 compared to the current fiscal year increased 368,000 or 3.9%. 24, 25 compared to 23, 24 increased 463,000 or 4.7%. Um, so those are the high level changes. Each individual category and department was listed part of the agenda package and the main items were listed in the memo. So if anyone, I figured we could talk at the end about all of those if anyone had questions. Um, important items to note, next slide. Um, so the rate study and cost of service analysis, we are obviously currently conducting the rate study, cost of service analysis. The outcome of the rate study will require further analysis of the budget after it is completed. Um, we're also going through labor negotiations. If these are completed prior to June, any necessary revisions will be included on the next drafts. Um, and then just another item that doesn't directly affect uh, like the operating revenue, but FEMA projects, we have you know many large projects um, that have not been obligated. These are still ones from the CZU fire and obviously most recently the storm ones. Uh, the district is going to have to cover those costs up front before receiving final reimbursement, and we'll have to fund our cost share as well. Uh, so more to follow on that when the capital budget is presented, but I figured that's kind of an important item to go over now. And next steps, next. So the next steps will be May. In in May, we'll bring. Um, to the budget and finance and the board meetings. The second rounds of the draft operating revenue and expenses will include any feedback from tonight's meeting, um, any, any other revisions staff may have that will be bringing the capital budget, which will highlight the planned projects and funding sources for each, and then the non-operating revenue expenses, uh, so 
property tax and assessment district revenue, interest income, and then our non-operating expenses, which are basically our debt principal and interest payments for our various loans. And internally in May, we'll begin compiling the full budget package document. And last slide, any questions? Okay, thank you, Kendra. Mm -hmm. uh, Gail, as chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, I'll just make a quick comment um, okay. in that obviously this in many ways this uh, operating budget is kind of has many placeholders in it because there are so many things that are going to change in terms of labor costs in terms of at least for 23 24 potentially the results of a new rate schedule um, and I think uh, at the meeting that the district uh, that the Budget and Finance Committee had. We also thought that, that we may need to revise some of the consumption numbers because we think they may be optimistic about uh, when Forest Springs and Brackenbury come online. And I, we all doubt that all of the CZU houses will be rebuilt. And, they cert and they, even if 50% of them are rebuilt, they certainly won't be by uh, 2023, 24. So that number has to be adjusted. And then another is that uh, the cost of um, uh, our contribution to Santa Margarita is right now not on the operating budget, is on, on not operating, but I think that the, the budget and finance group felt that it, it should be on the operating budget because the sort of base level cost of our contribution to that is, is not for doing projects, not for capital costs, it's for just running the administration of that. So um, I think these will evolve with time. And so I think that both Rick and Kendra wanted to get it, get this beginning in front of the board so that we can take comments and she can respond to those in the next uh, iter iteration. But they, they fully understand that there's a lot of things that are gonna change. Okay. So uh, do you have any comments at this point, or no, you reflect on made them. <laughs> okay, um, between what you've shared with us here and the committee Okay, uh, Bob? Okay, so I understand all those things, but um, at a policy level, as we start looking at uh, the proposed rate increase and uh, all the work that's going around that, this budget still meets only the minimum standard for multi year. It, it really needs to be extended to whatever the rate increase horizon is gonna be so that the community knows exactly where the money is going and we don't get into a situation like we got into in 2017 where it was promised on capital and two thirds of it went to operating. So that, that's a, at a policy level, that's something that I think really needs to be um, considered. I'm also a little disturbed by the fact that we continue do not separate out the fire surcharge number in the summary information that we're provided. You have to go all the way down into the uh, document in order to get that. And that is something that we said as a board, we wanted to make sure got separated out as a matter of policy, as part of getting that surcharge through. This is not the first time that's happened. Um, and I'm very, I'm very troubled by the fact that it keeps happening. Because if you take that out, our operating margins are not 22 and 20 percent, where it's much lower. I didn't calculate it, but the operating margin numbers go down to 1.7 million and 1.5 million. That is not a sustainable operating margin to be able to apply any kind of capital contribution to the repair and maintenance of our system, which requires a minimum of five million a year, and we're currently spending about three and a half a year. So we're, we're not even catching up on the, and that doesn't count what we have to do in terms of deferred maintenance in the tanks that we have that are, that are not being maintained at all. So th these are serious issues that, that I see with this. And as it stands right now, um, I, I, this is a very troubling budget. It basically goes back to the bad old days where we started co compressing what money we were gonna put into capital because all the money was going to operating. Um, 
just on the consumption number, I wanted to make sure um, the year before we had the 11% drop, is that right, in consumption? And so this year was basically flat with last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our experience with, this sort of is on Gail, uh, comment earlier, our experience is the numbers don't come back that fast once you get people to, unless you're going to go out with a marketing campaign that says, hey, <laughs> use a lot of water. Water your lawn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't see that coming back uh, very fast at all. And in fact, we may even see it go down a little bit as people get into different habits. So I think, I think we have way optimistic numbers on that, particularly in the second year. Um, let's see here. I am, I, I am not convinced that the operating expense number, I mean, last year, seemed, the estimated for this year seems really good because it's artificially depressed due to um, open positions, right? But it is amazing what kind of leverage you get when you control your operating expenses. The operating margins go way up. Um, I don't see that happening in the out years. I think the community needs to know that I, I think these numbers are extremely optimistic. And um, I, I, I just, I think this whole budget is basically a placeholder. We have to pass one by June 30th, but it's basically a placeholder. Uh, and the community, we, we need to have an entire new set of discussions around budgets once some of these things get uh, clarified a little bit. Um, I was not following your discussion about the non-operating and capital budgets. Are those coming back to the board in May? So the second meeting in May? Okay, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, please make sure we include in that the debt coverage ratio and the reserve accounts yes. levels. because. Yep. Right now I'm feeling with a $1.7 million margin projected for next year, I'm feeling the reserve uh, is not going to be robust. And certainly nowhere close to what our policy calls for. I just hope it's not going down from last year. It'd be nice to compare it to last year as well. Um, in terms of how to present the numbers relative to the assumptions, Putting things in a table, the numbers in a table with the explanation below makes it a lot easier to grasp the trends. And really when it comes to these budgets, because we're a static um, community and that there's really no growth here, it's more the trend line that's important, um, not so much the absolute numbers as well. Um, uh, you need to speak up a little more. You're trailing off at sorry. the end of every, um, every sentence. Okay, the other thing I think I heard in the presentation, you say that the budget for both years does not include a rate increase assumption. That's correct. But I think in your, um, I think in your discussion here, you did talk about a increase. Well, we know it's coming, but it, it's well, what, the way she's budgeted is just flat in terms of the rate. What part where I was talking about the rate study in the labor negotiations or in my memo? No, in, your me in the memo here, we were, you were talking about a rate increase for 24 25. You said the basic fee in includes Brack and Bray. Basic fee increase includes. So, so that's, is, that's just me saying that the reason it increased from 23 24 to 24 25 is because we're now have. Brack and Bray and Four Springs as customers, so we'll oh, be getting that not, extra not basic fee increase. revenue. Okay. Yeah. So I think you're, I think you're incredibly optimistic about that. And, and the poor people that lost their homes in the fire, they're in the county torture chamber. Not, they're not getting out of that anytime soon. Optimistic about consumption or basic fee? Uh, both. Well, basic fee is, I projected it at what our current rates are. Yeah, I understand that, but in terms of the number of dwellings or number of customers we're going to have, I don't think we're going to get Brackenbury and Forest Springs on in that time period. If we do, that's great, but we haven't really met a lot of schedules because of materials and all that. And in terms of the people being able to build from the fire, they're not getting out of the county torture chamber for a long time, if some of them ever get out. On uh, just a a point on consumption on Four Springs. They are now on our master meter for consumption. They, they are. Basic. 
they're not getting they're getting charged for a two inch master meter and they're using water through it we don't have the individual meters in that'll go in the improvements but we already are starting up last month to two months ago on serving them full-time consumption okay so they are paying the ten dollar or the twelve per unit they're paying uh, the okay. full, full unit price okay great well that's good news mm -hmm. But there's still a lot of homes up there that haven't been rebuilt as well. I mean, I, I just uh, an overly rosy picture. I, I, I just don't yes. think the county's the county's going to step up and do the right thing by them anytime soon. So it's it's tragic, and they have a real case. I think that they can make. Um, our average is over. Th our average is somewhere between three and four units per dwelling. But you were assuming six units. Did you actually look at the? Um, consumption for those accounts that where the homes were lost and they were all in that six unit range yeah they were in wow. yeah the six unit range um i think i took the last three year average uh wow that's i mean that's much higher so okay they, they probably have lawns well or um uh agriculture yeah. i mean maybe that's yeah, yeah, maybe that's, you know, that's some high high consumption homes in those yeah. areas that average it out to the low consumption homes Okay, given that the historical average for our expense, operating expense increase is closer to 6%, and in fact, the last couple of years has consumed 100% of the rate increase, why do we think we can get away with 3.9 and 4.7% increases in operating expenses? What is going to happen to make me believe that number? I mean, so those the, that the operating expenses were all the department heads, you know, put in their requests, and that's the sum total of all of those. So, I mean, you'd have to look into the detailed account uh, totals by account to see what's involved in those. What makes up the well, a big part of that too is uh, salaries. Because we've had a lot of retirees that went out at top steps and we're bringing new hires in at step one or whatever. So that's why we're a lot lower. I mean, it's a big drop just in salary. That, that might actually be something to um, quantify yeah. in, in a like document of some kind. For retirement from the classic, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The new yeah, people yeah. we're bringing on paper is considerably less expensive than the old. Um, these are all these, this, from a numbers point of view those are good things but to quantify it so we because you know again I'm looking at trends the trend line is not in our favor over the last 20 years it's been roughly about 5.7 percent over 25 years operating expense increase average right it obviously fluctuates from year to year um, so I, I got to see some numbers in order to, to so I included all of the account details in the budget. That's I understand that. If you provide me with the spreadsheets, I can actually do something with it. But otherwise, I have to try to manually do things, and that doesn't, I, I don't have time for that. So what are you trying to get? You're trying to get the in percentage increase? I'm, I'm trying to understand why we believe we can manage the 3.9 and 4.7% operating expense increase given our historical number. So it sounds like you want a working spreadsheet, not a... Wait, 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 wait. We're not giving the bond. A spreadsheet. Right. This is this is I, not the, the way the board. I didn't ask for that, but I, I did say that <laughs> I didn't ask for that. But I did say that if you provide something in paper that I can't copy and paste into a spreadsheet because it's not set up that way, then I can't use it. So that means that we have to have some other way of communicating why we believe these numbers. Because at this point in time, I, I don't I don't see how we manage that. Okay, Bob. I'm, I I I feel. Mark, I, I feel I have to break in here but, because but, but they, they just Bob, have, they just explained but Bob, why but it's three nine Bob, versus five Bob's seven. Point of, of the trend line, I, I agree with. Yeah, you have if, to, if, we if have to communicate this to our public. If, if, they're, if they've been running, is, yeah. and, and I, I don't know whether you know what he's providing or what he's citing is correct or not. But if he is, if it's been running at six percent, then why do we think we're Simply addressing that. I don't think he needs the, the, the data. I don't if need the spreadsheet. Just address the question. Address this question. Yeah. 
with no, with some numbers. But, but all the numbers are on the spreadsheet. Well, okay, but, but okay, fine. The, the, we're, we're, we're looking at just numbers in a. And I, if I could copy and paste that into a spreadsheet, I might yeah. be able to do something with it. But, I can't do that. Well, but we're looking at two different ways to make a budget. One way is bottom up, and the other way, way is I, I'm not necessarily going to say top down, but it's a historical trend. And all Bob Worley wants you to do is compare the two for a sanity check and say, okay, you went to the department heads and they said this is what they were going to spend. And now I look back over the last five years, and each year it's gone up this much. I'm going to go back to the department heads and say, why do you think that's so? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, that's what we're looking for. It sounds like that there is justification for this, but I, I, without delving into considerable detail, I don't understand that. But I understand James' explanation pretty clearly. And what Rick is saying about yeah. Low, yeah. Low, yeah. lower salaried staff now. And some of the operating accounts will change considerably this year because we're going from well water to surface water predominantly this year. Our electrical costs go down, our chemical costs go down. Uh, there is a shift in, in operational costs, and the director of operation went down, all the department heads went right. down each, each line item expense and tried to adjust. Um, those now we should have prior years <laughs> to, to look at. Yeah, well, all, all I know is that historically the COVID has been at three percent, and our operating expense increases have been at a multiple of that, mm -hmm. like uh, almost two x. Mm -hmm. so, and then I'd look and see, you know, how how the well staff did to stay within those numbers, and so they've got a pretty good track record of. of the, the, the gauging what our expenses are. So, well, and, and I. I, have I a lot of and I especially have the question, given that we're assuming a 5% COLA, because again, historically, the operating expense increase has been above the COLA. Above the what? I can... The COLA. Sorry, the cost of living adjustment. Yeah. yeah. So I think what this really is, is some suggestion for Carly to Kendra. Or Kendra, I'm sorry, Kendra, to do a more thorough job of challenging these guys on their numbers when they give them to you, and to give us a comparison with historic, some comparison with historical, so we can see whether we think it makes sense. I, I think what it's also saying too, Jeff, is that given where we are on inflation, yeah. and given what that is going to mean relative to overall operating costs. And given the fact that there's going to be a proposal for a rate increase going to our community, we need to be able to justify what it is that we're saying because in the 2017 rate study, they put in operating expense increases at 2.9%. Mm -hmm. We didn't make that, I don't think, any year except maybe one. Most of the years were 2x. Mm -hmm. So. The, the historical uh, value given to those rate study finances that put in, from my point of view, are virtually zero unless they're backed up with real quantitative analysis that I don't know was done in 2017. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the sale that has to be made to the community in order for them basically to not vote no. Mm -hmm. Right? Because again, it's a backwards vote. It's not they have to vote yes, yeah, it's right. they right, have to vote no. So uh, this is all getting prepared for that, and um, I, I, I don't. I'm certainly not comfortable with where we are right now with that um, with that number. Okay, thank you for uh, thank you for listening. Okay, Jeff. Um, I have a lot of little nits here, and I'm not going to bother with them right now because there are larger issues to be dealt with. I think so. Um, uh, a couple of yeah. if Jeff, if you have questions you want to submit uh, to Kendra and yeah, myself, yeah, I'll just leave. Feel free. Yeah, I'll go. I mean, I've got a bunch of little things questions to answer. Some of which relates to some of Bob's questions, but and I we think will send those out to the full board. Mm -hmm. Any questions yeah. from other board members? Um, questions that I have then uh, under professional services, uh, I didn't see the cost for the rate study from Jeff uh, Tellus. Did I miss that? That was budgeted for this this current budget we're in. It's already been budgeted. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah. So, it was included so in been, last year's and, biennial and budget. It's not part of it's not part of this upcoming budget. Uh, but we pay that when? Well, depending on when they invoice us. Right. It get with it, it gets coded in the year it gets coded, but I mean it's, we're a little okay. behind on it, so it might filter into it's gonna know. it's gonna filter into uh, Yeah. And that would just be a carryover then. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a carryover into yeah. next year's budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know the board members have said it. I need to say it also. The uh, optimistic uh, views on uh, CZU fire recovery. No. You're, you're assuming 85% of the homes are going to come back online? Well, so. That's not going to happen. So let me make a comment about that because per our basic waiver policy, we they receive a three-year waiver from being billed the basic and consumption charges. Right. After the three years is up, we automatically start billing them again. But we are going. Hang on. <laughs> we are bringing to you know budget and finance and the board. We are trying to come up with something to grant an extension, just given the nature of how long the county's been taking and all of that. So that was based that was based on the current policy that we have now. So. You know that could also change given whatever the board decides to do with granting an extension on that basic waiver right i, I think for the purposes of budget assuming uh, consumption from those homes at the rate that it's overly it's overly optimistic okay. and before i heard from rick that we we're selling water to four springs my comment was going to be the same on them i thought that the combination of those two were we're optimistic, and um, the assumption that we're going to uh, increase water sales after we've been under uh, the restrictions, after we've seen the conservation that we've had for the last several years to what it was, what, on, I think you said it was on the three-year average. No, we're not, we're not going to be there. And I'd, I'd like to see realism in, into that number also. I think it's overly optimistic for that. Um, and you mentioned uh, FEMA, just as a, as a one line item. FEMA is being one of the issues. The other two were the, the, the rate study and the labor negotiations. But uh, on FEMA, we know uh, projects that we're spending on, we know where we're, we're projected to be spending. Um, what's their uh, either reimbursement time frame, <coughs> cash flow? Uh, how is that happening? Because we've been working with FEMA on reimbursements now. Is it going on three years? Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind, some of, a lot of our projects have not even been obligated yet. We have a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as you all know, not only California, but the United States has had one disaster after another. They're totally swamped. We're getting emails back that we're just totally swamped. Right. We're trudging through it very slowly, mm -hmm. but it may be, and that's a concern to, to the district that we have to put this money out first it's, before it's, we even get to know, one, if it's going to be obligated right. and the cost to be to be reimbursed to the district. As, as long as it's appropriately reflected in the budget. That's correct. That um, we're spending that money now, our estimate is that we would be reimbursed three years from now. I, I'm, I'm guessing at that. But the, we're trying the, to then we're trying to tie FEMA down to get some dates. It's, it's almost impossible. Doesn't that go in the capital budget? That's yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that goes in the capital budget. Right. Yeah. But, and right. and well, Jeff, I, I will say, has been very good about always reminding us about this cash flow issue. Oh, I've been budget. Yeah, bugging them about it from yeah, the day so, one. Yeah, so we okay. are aware of it, okay. and, and we will address it right. when we return to the capital yeah. budget, but it okay. really doesn't come up so much for the purposes. And uh, the surcharge is only for the CZU. It is not for right. FEMA or disaster in general. That is tied strictly by resolution by this board to CZU. Right. Okay. 
on the question though about cash flow, or, uh, I don't think in the past we've done a cash flow um, statement as part of the budget. Are you planning on doing one this year? Certainly hoping we get. Because I, I think we're yeah, in a much we more uh, vulnerable situation yes. now than we've been in the past. Yes, we definitely need one because we're going to have a lot of obligations with contractors, and we don't know when FEMA's going to. Right. And we could find ourselves with. We no cash. We we did. <laughs> we did take out 15 million specifically for this. I wanted to go 25, but we didn't have the ability to carry that. Yeah. So um, well, that that helps. But I'm uh, you know, that, that hopefully we don't need more than that. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at this and saying you know lots and lots of construction work going on and lots of contractors who want to get paid now, and who knows when FEMA will get there. The, the biggest I risk I think in that is the the. Um, raw water pipelines, right? Yeah. Because that's the biggest number. And if yes. we don't have enough cash to cover doing that simultaneous with everything else, yes. then we got a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, some of these other mainland projects are over a million dollars too. I mean, it's yeah. uh, the costs are astronomical this, this time around. And the lion, uh, the lion access road repair, regardless what project we pick, multiple millions of dollars. Okay. Hopefully not 15 then. We've heard from all the board. I'd like to hear from anybody, uh, any members of the public that wish to comment on this item, the draft budget for the fiscal year 2023 to 2025. Seeing none. I hope the public can hear us. Mr. Dawson. Can you comment that you can hear us appropriately? Hi, yes. You're able to hear me now? We can. So yeah, I've, I've tried to text and email a few people just to provide them with updates. I would say that um, in general, the situation's much improved. I'm very appreciative of that. The people that I can hear clearly and consistently are Mark, Bob, Kendra, um, Holly, um, people that I can, uh, and, and some, most of the time, I think, Jeff, I have an idea what you're saying. Um, Gail, I hear a little of what you're saying. Uh, Rick, I hear a little of what you're saying, maybe 50% of each. Carly, I could make out virtually nothing. So that just to let you know how things stand right now. You can hear me. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so there's no motion that we need to discuss on this. This was a discussion. We provided comments. Uh, and we can move on then from that item. Okay. Um, does anybody want to pull anything from the uh, consent agenda? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, that would be just the minutes from last meeting. Okay. Um, and you want to provide comments on those? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, this was a pretty substantive topic that, you know, the, the minutes here talk about bringing the item, it wasn't really clear um, what the item was, and then it said I explained my position. Well. Okay, but this is one of those where um, there are specific things that are in the community comments, and I'd like to get some of my position in this as well. May I say that um, I was waiting for something to come up about this simply because I could not hear anything. Nothing came through. Well, I was I was going by Braille and what and the few notes that I had written down. I normally count very heavily on recordings for specifics, and because I did not have any of that. Well, I I, I did go to the community TV um, website and listen to the section, and I was able to actually pick up. Um, it wasn't complete, but it was enough to be able to get the gist of what I was saying. So I, well, you I, knew I, what you had said. I didn't. No, 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 <laughs> I could not pick it up. Well, I'm sorry. Um, 
there were big holes. What I picked up was actually what I got from what I was saying here. There, there, was, there were sections of it that were very clear about what I was saying. Um, at any rate, there's also a uh, error in here. The discussion, the discussion was not by board and staff, it was community members. I don't believe there was any staff comments on the topic. Um, so if what you're saying is that because you couldn't pick anything up, nothing could go in here, um, did we pick up what um, uh, Mr. Mosher said? Not very well. But there's a very specific statement. In I, I heard so, a specific statement okay. that he said. I didn't hear everything he said. Yeah, but there were things that I said in there that were able to be picked up as well. So, Bob, what would you propose at this point? Well, I could provide a, um, like a uh, three or three or four line summary that we can include in there. Um, which basically states my position and reflects what you can get from the recording. I would support that. I'm okay with that. I can either, I can read it here and then I can provide it by email for update. Why don't you just provide the, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good with the email. All right, then if he's going to do that, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah, well, Mark, no, that's fine. Gina. Mark, hear me? Um, it would be important with us that whatever changes are gonna be made to the minutes read into the record here so the board can approve them because the board does need to approve the minutes and it would be irregular to add things after the fact, you know, that directors email, but the full board hadn't seen. We could bring it back to the next meeting. We can, re we can review those. We're not approving those minutes now. We'll approve those <coughs> minutes at another meeting. <coughs> Okay, that, that approach, so then the, the board members that want to add things would email Holly and she'll put them in the minutes and then Wait. bring it back <coughs> to the approval at the next board meeting? Yes. Okay. And Gail has said that she wants to submit something also? Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about, um, can the uh, people from the public that I couldn't understand what they were saying, can they add something to it as well? I, I, if, it's, if it is appropriate, I'd like to keep that to the directors. I think that's enough. So, no. Mark, you need to add it. Okay. I'd just like to add that um, I think if, if folks are going to email things to Holly, then Holly ought to be able to, you know, take what's provided and, and summarize it in a way that's consistent with how the minutes are typically prepared. Um, I agree with that. Yes. Okay. Moving on then. The district reports. Uh, district well, managers. Well, I, I'm sorry to interject again. We do have a hand up from a member of the public, and because the item was pulled, it should also be open to discussion from the public. Uh, okay. Uh, does anybody from the public want to comment on this? I do see uh, Jim Mosher's hand up. Jim? Uh, can you hear me? We can. Uh, I just want to say that um, if there's going to be something put in the minutes about something I said, um, I'd prefer it not be included unless I can also review it. And I have no uh, no need to have it put into the minutes. Thank you. Okay. You heard that right, Holly? Mm-hmm. Let me make sure I understand that. So if it's a, if it was said during public session and it's hearable, legible through the recording mm -hmm. and he commented, why would it not go into the minutes? Yep. I think it has to be in there. I think it has to be in there. It's already put, in there. If you're, if you're gonna put Mr. Moran and Mrs. Moran in there, 
Jim, and, and it is in there already, actually. Yeah, it's right. in there. And I think it adequately mm -hmm. reflects what he <coughs> said about this. Yeah, he's just asking not to be changed. Yeah. Oh, I thought he that said was, included. No. No, he just said don't no. don't change it without no, right. seeing it. So he'd rather it not be changed. Okay, got it. No, I, and that's fine. That wasn't reflecting that anybody was going to change his stuff. That's consistent with what we agreed that the yeah. more important yeah. thing is with the directors to say it in greater length mm -hmm. than the directors. Any further comments on this, on these minutes? Otherwise, we'll move on to district reports. District manager's report. I have uh, two short items. Uh, the first, uh, under uh, community project funding, Congressman Panetta has submitted his funding request for important community projects in the California's 19th Congressional District to the House Appropriation uh, Committee. Each congressman, I do believe, uh, is allowed to submit up to 15 uh, projects for their community for fiscal year 2023. One of the 15 projects was uh, 1.5 uh, million for the Forest uh, Springs Bracken Gray water storage tank. Uh, so I guess they're commonly known as earmarks. I do believe that, that would be the earmarks. That would be the <laughs> earmarks. <laughs> yes. That used to be gone, but came back a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's not a guaranteed funding, but uh, you know that's, that's awesome that we made the congressman's list. And then the second one we released today, the request for proposal for uh, district manager recruitment was released today. So all the things are moving. Okay. And that's Thank what you. I have to point. Uh, department status reports. Uh, Bob, you want to start? Yeah, yeah and point. we just go through them all, right? Sure. Um, this one is, would be for Carly. Carly, and the two grants that are ongoing, the 494K and 360K, when were those awarded? Mm -hmm. Fiscal year 21, and they're four-year grant pro program periods. Got it. So they they were awarded before June 21, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I thought they were earlier, because but I didn't remember. Um, what is the schedule again for this HCP? <laughs> so right now it does look like we are going to wrap it up by the end of the year. Uh, it's currently in review internally with our staff. So we're waiting for our feedback from our staff here. And then as soon as we get that back to the consultant, we'll be able to move ahead. What, once you give her the feedback, what, why would it take from now until the end of the year? Um, it's just pretty much finishing out the whole plan. So there are draft chapters, but it's not the full draft document at this point. And right Still? Now, um, so right now, our staff are working through determining exactly how many projects and what we'll need for mitigation credits as part of the HCP program. Um, and as soon as we have that, she'll be able to hopefully round it out. Uh, I'm hoping to bring an update uh, to the committee either in May or June at the latest, and that will also include some information on a potential uh, mitigation credit sale as well. Has she stubbed out these chapters that are, <coughs> or are they just not written? So. Just, but she stubbed them out. Okay, yeah, I mean, this is, I think, year seven. Right. And then there is a review period for the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service once right. we submit. Um, okay, so on the water conservation, um, we've been in stage two since 2014, I believe. So we are talking, and so really the 10% that we asked customers to do is actually really a stage three, even though we didn't designate it as stage three because we were already in stage two. So we are formally now going to remove stage two and go back to stage one. We, we're slow walking that right now just to be sure that we don't jeopardize any of our drought grants. I think we back too soon and to make sure that we follow any type of procedures that that grant funding would require. But that is our intention to go to voluntary conservation. Okay. I think I think sending clear messages to the community is a, is it's a good thing. It's important because you know, we don't want to continue to have our customers have to conserve. They don't have to. We need to let them reward themselves and get out of the, the strict conservation because our customers have responded very well. Yeah, and I, and I think also when the drought does come, then it, it 
makes it clearer if you're already in stage two, you're going to stage three. Right. If you're in stage one, you're going to stage two. And we didn't mm -hmm. do that this last time. We gave a mixed message to people That's because right. we were already meeting stage two requirements right. when, when we asked for an additional uh, conservation. We tried just to target the outdoor <coughs> water use because our customers do such a fantastic job on their indoor that we, you know, and it was a tough message. I well, that came down from the state also. Yeah. The percentage but, number came down from the state, but it didn't meet our stage three. It, it, it did fully there. It did actually. Just that did. Yeah. The rest of what we're asked for on was only stage two though. Okay, but again, I, I understand exactly. You no, know, but because it, it's a better press release for getting people's attention if you're saying we're going to stage three in order to make that happen. Um, okay. Um, the 68 inches is, is a good number. Um, I, I have seen, uh, I think on Facebook, there's a guy that posts uh, rainfall. He's at like 120. Yeah, I've seen that. Right, yeah. in that moment. And so we just have to recognize this is one of the drier spots in the, in the valley for, for rain gauges. Um, on the green business program, what's involved with that and how much staff time is being spent? Right, so um, in 2017, when we were certified, it probably took maybe two days, um, a few hours over a couple months uh, to work with the program coordinator at the Green Business. Um, pretty much it's just looking through our different uh, purchasing that we do for paper. So they look for recycled paper, certain types of light bulbs, um, looking for places to cut back in energy use. And if you go through a checklist, and then once you go through that checklist and they confirm everything, they certify you to Green Business. So we're spending staff time on light bulbs and paper. Or just, well, the ordinary already occurs anyway, Maybe. so it's just making sure we're buying the. I mean, the is, is if we buy new pumps, do we get? Are they more efficient electrically, so that actually that's the bigger savings that we could get when we when we do buy new pumps? Some of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, if they're legacy, and we're replacing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing, right? I mean, yeah. you know, my new furnace is is uh, you know half the size and. But like for our stuff. paper products, that's just all invoices she's got to show because we already do that, so. Yeah, no, I, I, I know we do, okay. And engineering, um, oh, sorry, on business and finance. Um, on the past dues, the late fees continue to accumulate though, right? So if there are people that aren't paying them because they just don't want to, they're, they are paying a premium for that. Do we need to look at those late fees in light of the inflation that is going to be with us for some time? We could probably revisit it. Um, that's something I can add to the list. And would it be possible to do a, a different late fee for people on the um, uh, rate reduction program versus those that are not? I'll look into it. Might be a legal question. Well, I, I, that's, uh, as well. that's why I ask. Um, because I know all late fees or penalties have to be actual costs too. So, well, and we don't go out and do the tagging anymore. So there may be maybe reductions. Maybe yeah. Have to be ju justified um, based on cost, or they'd have to be subsidized. Um, you know, via the same funds that provide for the customers that have rate reduction. Okay, operations, um, we did a lot more well water than I was expecting. Yeah, we had um, our surface water treatment plants went down due to turbidities during the storms. So we had to go to well water because we couldn't run them and we couldn't get them back online. But April, we're going back on. We're already back on. Back on. Okay. We've been back on, but that, this report does not yeah, show. It shows March, right. And engineering, sorry, scrolling down here. Um, okay, um, any news on the elimination of the uh, Eckley pump station and tank? Are we? No changes there okay. yet. Uh, estimated completion date for Alta Via, and are we coordinating with the residents proactively? We are coordinating with residents proactively. Signage is going up next week. Project start should be the 8th. And we're looking at project completion in mid to late November. And letters are also going out two yeah. weeks prior. Letters will go out next week as well. Excellent. Um, 
the on the on the uh, Peavine um, path that says here tree survey and clearing work is underway. When do we think we'd be able to be able to go out and walk that again once that is done? Has Mike said anything to you, Carly, about when he's going to be? So I think they're just doing the initial walkthrough, um, and actually, they're not doing any of the tree not, work just yet. Ah, so, uh, so TBD. Ways out. Okay, so this is um, pr um, prospective. Yes. Um, let us know when that clearing starts, right? Because I want to get back out there as soon as possible. Um, when does the investigation work start for the Felton Heights tank project? As soon as we're working uh, with legal and getting the agreements together to, um, for Mr. Erickson to allow contractors on his property to do that work. So I imagine that's one of our high priorities uh, with legal and that should be happening very shortly, probably within this next month. So sometime in May. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Redwood Park Tank Project, when is the estimated completion date for the pipeline? We are looking at a project start first of May, so completion is going to be approximately two months after that. Okay. Early July. So disrupted for about two months then. Um, Somewhere in there. Okay. At least part of it will be no school. Um, okay, great. Thank you all. Uh, I think it's just I don't over now. I don't. I don't know. Uh, let me go. Through. Thank you for that. I want to hear from the rest of the directors to see if we have any questions. Then I'll go out to the public on this on the uh, reports thing. And Jeff, no questions. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't have any questions <coughs> either. Uh, Jim Mosier, did you have a comment or question on these? Other reports? Go ahead. Uh, no, I don't. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we saw the hand up signal. So, thank you. Okay. Um, moving on then. Uh, I don't see anything else. We need to go ahead. There's just one last thing I'd like to thank the, the Carver, Kendra, and the management team for the budget work. Kendra especially has been, this is her first fully solo biannual budget. And she has spent a lot of time, put together a lot of good work, and, and so has the management team uh, supporting her efforts. I just want to thank them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.